Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through the circuit breaker pattern in JavaScript. So let's start talking about what the circuit breaker pattern actually is. So the idea of the circuit breaker is that you have an event of some sort that is happening continuously, like you, you think of it as a flow of events that is happening. And if that flow is disrupted in some way, what you want is to have something that tells the flow to stop for a little for a given period of time basically a breaker or a circuit breaker thing uh, it's it's actually easy to just call it a circuit that's kind of where the name comes from so you have let's say you have a flow of electricity and then you have a circuit break like the there's some for some reason you want that flow to stop and then you can simply switch flip the circuit breaker so it actually stops d uh, performing the operation or like the flow is disrupted and then you can uh, basically connect the circuit whenever you you want. Now this is a little bit abstract but it I hope it will make sense very very soon. In coding one of the most common use cases for a circuit breaker is when you're doing something like a polling type of thing. Let's say that you do for some reason you need to go to a server continuously over and over and over to get some information from the server. And the thing is that some server, you know, because of networks sometimes can be a little bit, you know, unstable and sometimes things are down and something sometimes things aren't really working. You just re you you want a way to, you know, maybe wait a little while. Like let's say that you do 10 requests to a server and then it goes down for maintenance or whatever. And then you you know your request starts failing. Now, if you're being a good coder, usually you will have some type of alert system saying that hey, this thing that I'm doing, it's not working anymore, and I need to go and fix it. But if you know that there is such a thing as downtime and maybe there's some, something unstable on the network, a circuit breaker will basically allow you to kind of mitigate that because you, if you if you have bells and whistles going off every single time you know a request fails then you're gonna get a lot of alerts all the time because sometimes a network request doesn't really work so I'll show you how to do a circuit breaker and I'll give you a concrete example of how I use a circuit breaker in like professionally and how I've seen it being used previously now one thing that is very common for a circuit breaker is for circuit breaker is a health check so what is a health check well a health check is basically a process a basically just a script or um, like a server or something that and the only job of that process is to check that a server is running correctly so here we have our server and we can see here that it's just a very simple express server we require express and we have a single endpoint now this is just a demo example in usually you would have like this would be a single endpoint in a very large system and all it's going to do is that it's going to return an object with the status of OK so if I start up this server like that we have now a node server running and we can actually you know we can actually go to the server localhost 3000 and let's see oh sorry slash health check and there we are so we can now see that the health check is working that's the only purpose of this endpoint it's 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 basic goal is to just have an endpoint that some other process can visit to make sure that the server is actually running and if the server goes down this this request will fail and then we have alert system that will tell will tell our programmers that hey the server's not running you better check it out so that you know everything is running correctly so let's look at our health check so the health check script is just a simple script that requires the circuit breaker and we'll talk about this in just a moment then it has a wait function basically the wait function is just going to do a timeout and resolve after a given time so that we can wait per request because we don't want to run like every millisecond we just want to wait and then we have a while loop that is going to run forever and it's going to call the circuit breaker is going to call the health check function which is going to do the request to the health check and then it's going to wait wait for a second so let's run this let's run the health check and as we can now see in our output here that every second we're we're polling pulling to the server we're checking that the status is actually okay 
over and over and over. And this is the entire purpose of a health check, to just make sure that the system is up and running. And the, if you're doing professional development, you will probably have seen this before. And if you haven't done professional development, you're going to, to see, find out that this is actually very common. Okay, let's look at the circuit, break it's, uh, circuit breaker itself. So we require fetch. And then we have some type of event tracking. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So we have, you know, some type of something called event tracking. Just bear with me for now. Then we have two variables, last call failed and failed calls, which are both set to zero. And then we return an object that has a function called health check. Now this is, there's a bit of code here, so we'll just walk through exactly what's happening now. So the first thing we're doing is that we are getting the current time. And then we're checking if there is a failed call or a last call failed and the difference between like the like now like what's happening right now and the last time that the last time we had a failed call is greater or equal to 10,000 milliseconds or 10 seconds then we will simply like if that's true sorry, less than or equal to 10 seconds, will simply log out skipping call and return. And this is where the circuit breaker comes in, because the thing is that if we have a failing call, we don't want the rest of the code to just keep on running over and over and over, because let's say, because what we, the event tracking that we we saw earlier is going to send alerts to our programmers, or like the idea to our alert systems, and there's, if we don't want that to be spammed over and over and over with like a bunch of alert messages over and over and over, and we just want to kind of let the just just give it a little bit of time, we 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 have this. This is like where the circuit breaker becomes useful because now the circuit breaker is going to track. It's going to know that okay, the last call failed. All right, I'll just wait ten seconds and then just skip the call or break the circuit. And then when there's, you know, when I've passed 10, the 10 seconds mark, I'll, I'll try again. And, you know, if it doesn't work, I'll, you wait 10 seconds and then I'll try again and again and again. And this, you know, this is an arbitrary number. It can be hours or days or whatever you want to call it. It kind of depends on the system that you're working with. And basically that's the idea that you simply, instead of just keep uh, like doing the network request over and over, you'll simply do a retry every amount of time, whatever you, it's an arbitrary amount, you can make it whatever you want. So let's look at the rest of this code. So we do our fetch to the health check endpoint, we get the JSON, and then we do event.healthcheck status. Basically what this is going to do is that it's going to sh send the status of our server, which is if it's working, going to be okay, to our event tracking system. Now the event tracking, this is just me faking this, but usually you'll have some type of event tracking, like there's tons and tons of ways that you can do event tracking and gather metrics for the health and monitoring of your system. So this is just a fake one. We just instantiate it and all it's gonna do is that it's gonna log out the health check status and if you do the call to health check fail, all it's going to do is, you know, say call failed with the error message and that's it. But in a production environment, this would be a call to some external service that handles logging and error tracking and so, uh, something like that. But just bear with me for now. So here we call our external health check status a service basically that's tracking that everything is working correctly and then we reset failed calls to zero so whenever we have a successful call we just reset the whole thing like failed calls are now zero and if it fails because as you can see we're in try catch here if we fail we'll simply we'll store the current time so we know when the last time we failed was and then we will increment failed calls and then we will send a health check failed message to our event tracking now if we fail this is the, the like if we fail more than three times 
we will consider that to be a very critical problem. And that's this is once again, it's kind of business central because let's say that you know that you have a flaky server, you have like some old system that sometimes it's working, but you know, if you just let it wait a little while, it's going to go up again. Or maybe you have a lot of integrations to like other companies and they are doing like maintenance and you know that their maintenance usually is like a few hours, then you will simply set the timing to something like what they usually take in terms of time and then you will set that this number um, how many times you can fail this call to some number that makes sense to you so that you can try a few times but if you keep on trying it and it doesn't work then you know that oh shit something's really bad and then you want to log out like send some event that is much more you know that indicates that hey something is really really wrong now so if I now go to my server here and I kill it. Did you see here? Call failed. Request to localhost 3000 health check. Failed. Connection refused. And now it's just skipping the calls over and over. So I'm not making the network request anymore. And then I try again. I just keep on skipping. Skip, skip, skip. So no network request. Nothing is being logged because I don't want to waste a lot of time logging out something that I'm expecting. And here we are. Now we have tried three times and shit call fail fix this now this is now the now, now the circuit breaker has understood that okay we have failed more than three th times with 10 seconds delay between each attempt this is a really critical problem we need to fix it right now now this is just a demo example as I said earlier but in your business this is going to be a little bit uh, this is going to be very useful to you because as I said if you have integrations to other systems you know that you don't control this allows you to check like uh, check if their system is just having a little bit of, you know of temporary issue or if it's a really critical problem that you need to address and yeah this is this is basically there all there is to a circuit breaker all uh, so, so to summarize a circuit breaker is just a way an object that checks how many like how many times has have you tried to do something and it and if you know you can if you want to delay or something it just delays every attempt to do that thing by you know whatever number you give it like some some time delay that you you know whatever you want it to be basically and if you go over a certain number or you know this is not necessarily the exact way a circuit breaker has to work but this is the way that I've seen it being used most of the time so basically if you if you hit some type of amount a threshold of failed calls it will simply notify some external like somebody about all right this is now a critical problem we are considering this a critical problem you need to fix it immediately so if I now finally I just everything works again I do notes starting the server again yeah everything goes back to normal and now the circuit breaker is has been reset to to the previous state and if I kill it it will start behaving exactly in the same manner so a circuit breaker to summarize is an extremely useful thing to have for integrations to systems that you are not in control of and the systems that may be a little bit flaky and not always be there when you need them to be so they will th it will let you kind of do a few retries before you go and check if there's a problem hopefully this was useful to you have a great day